Hi everybody, this is Anne. To a non-potter, mugs seem like the easiest wear that a potter can create. But there are basic design elements a potter must consider which makes the process more complex. In this video, we're going to focus specifically on the design considerations for the handle of the mug. So let's dissect the basic elements of the handle. First is the handle length. How long the handle should be will vary depending on the size of the user's hand and the design of the mug. Next is the width of the handle. Width is not only measured from side to side, but also the thickness of the handle from top to bottom. The profile on the top and bottom sides of the handle can really complement the design of the mug body, rim, and foot. It can also decide whether the potter will pull or extrude the handle. Don't forget about the slender edges of the handle. Do you want the edges rounded, squared off, angled, or beveled? All important things to consider for the overall design. Now that we have defined the characteristics of the handle, let's talk about the issues that will determine what kind of handle to put on the body of the mug. The potter's subjective sense of beauty, or aesthetic, plays a huge role in what the final handle decisions will be. Do the lines of the handle flow well with the lines of the mug body? Does the handle complement the design or profile of the mug? By placing this handle among the elements of the carved areas on the body, Donna Cohen creates a fluidity which is very aesthetically pleasing. Then there are functional considerations. If the mug is functional, the liquid should flow easily so that the user can drink from it. It should be lightweight to hold, and it should be easy to clean. These unique creations from Barrett Hines play with the idea of non-functional and functional. Finally, a potter needs to consider how comfortable the mug is to use. This example by Marie Weichmann displays a handle that's big enough for her fingers to fit, the edges are smooth to the touch, and the handle's not too far away from the body of the mug. Now I thought I'd show you six different mug sizes and profiles. I'll show you first a handle that I don't think works well on the mug, then I'll fashion a handle to solve the problems encountered from the first faulty handle. The first one I'm calling the short and squatty mug body. I started by pulling a thin handle. Now if you'd like more information on how to do this, check out the video link above. Okay, here's the first handle I attached to the mug that has problems aesthetically, functionally, and potentially with comfort as well. First, the handle's positioned above the rim of the mug. The shape of the handle creates a severe angle to its profile. I prefer gentle flowing lines. In addition, this position makes the handle more vulnerable to being broken off. When I look at it straight on, the handle looks a bit delicate. I'd be afraid the weight from the liquid would put strain on it and snap it right off. It's big enough for a one-finger grip, but a full cup of liquid would be difficult to pick up without the cup tipping and spilling. There are a lot of different handles a potter can make to effectively solve those issues. I'll show you one that fits my particular aesthetic. As you can see, the handle sits well below the rim, making it less vulnerable to being hit. I've compressed the ends of the handle, thus creating a larger area for attachment. This still gives the finger a comfortable place to sit without making it look too delicate, like it's going to snap off. It also creates a better profile line between the handle and the body. I also want to show you how I beveled the tail end. Beginners often forget to consider this section of the handle, but it's important when taking the mug to the next level. Here you can see that the handle sits far enough away from the body so your finger doesn't have to touch it, but it's not too far away to be uncomfortable to hold. Here are the two handle choices side by side. The mug body is the same, but you can see what a dramatic difference the handle design makes. Next I threw a short upside down pyramid shape, then gave a foot a design element. Again, I'll show you a handle with a few problems. I thought I'd play on that inverted pyramid form by echoing that shape. I created an upside down, severely angled handle and attached it. Aesthetically, I like the concept, but right off the bat, I noticed that the handle doesn't line up with the foot design. 
Second, that severely angled shape doesn't work as well for comfort or function. It creates a sharp pocket at the top that'll pinch the fingers, perhaps even burning them against the heated mug body. If I try to move the fingers downward to the bottom of the handle, the grip is farther away from the mug body, making it more difficult to balance the handle with the heavy body. Just changing the shape of the handle can solve these problems. Here I'm creating a handle the same length, width, and depth as the first one. I decided to turn the handle right side up this time. Here's the shape I chose. The handle extends outward and slightly angled downward, giving the fingers a place to grip the handle without pinching them or without the fear of burning them. I've centered the handle over top of one of the foot indentations so that aesthetically the lines flow well. Here are the handle choices side by side. I think changing the shape has really improved the aesthetics, the function, and the comfort. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Next I threw a right side up pyramid shape that's a bit larger than the last two. I gave it a little softer curve in the center and added a bit of a profile along the foot. As the muck has a much wider bottom, making it appear bottom heavy, I thought I'd play on that and attach a hefty handle too. As you can see, the handle's a bit jarring. The weighty handle actually adds a visual heft to the more elegant mug body. I did give the inside edge a bit of a bevel, but otherwise the profile is lacking of any finesse. Even though the length of the handle extends from top to bottom, the heft limits the number of fingers I can even fit inside the loop. Plus it makes it more difficult to find a comfortable spot for the rest of the fingers. The extra weight that the handle adds will surely compete for a good balance with the heavy liquid when lifting the mug. This time I'll opt for a more elegant solution by extruding a handle. This particular tool has a profile which echoes the notched profile on the foot. Here's what I came up with. When I turn the mug around, the lines of the handle definitely flow better with the lines of the mug body. The profile on the handle elegantly echoes the profile along the foot. There's ample room for at least two fingers, if not more, for ease of lifting and balance. Here are the two handles side by side. Again, it's the same mug, but you can see how the thick handle almost looks like an afterthought, and it was not well considered. Moving on to a bit of a taller mug, this time I thought I'd toss in a design element of a dart to the body. Again, I thought I'd extrude a handle, this time with a plain rounded profile. From the side view, it looks like there's plenty of room for maybe even four fingers. The inverted dart causes the handle to visually appear like it's a little farther away from the mug body, but it's really not. Functionally, I think this handle will work fine, and it looks comfortable for your fingers. The problem with this handle for me is purely aesthetic. I went to all the trouble of adding a cool dart, and I want the handle that'll accentuate that feature. Again, I extruded a handle, but this time I thinned it down a little by stretching it, and I also shortened it a bit. And here's what I came up with. The handle's fashioned right on top of the dart to accentuate that inverted space. To me, the flow of the lines are much more appealing. I beveled the edges to echo the beveled edges of the darted seam, but it's not too sharp to be uncomfortable. I also beveled the tail end of the handle so that it lined up with the inside bevel. I can still get two fingers in the loop and balance it with my thumb on top, so it's functional and comfortable, but to me the lines are more pleasing. Now here they are, side by side. Aesthetics are very subjective. One potter might like the first handle better, but I like the second, as the lines flow better from the body. What other choices would you make? Tell us in the comments below. Next, I threw a round, globe-shaped mug. The outwardly curved shape automatically presents a number of potential problems when designing a handle. 
I thought I'd return to the pulled handle this time. As the mug body's round, I thought I'd echo this with a round handle. As the body of the mug is already pushing outward, adding a handle that accentuates that push will physically and visually affect the balance of the whole design. Notice that the way I attach the handle by curling the ends toward each other and pushing them into the body wall makes the handle appear disconnected. It just looks slapped on and detached. The distance of the fingers from the mug body will make it difficult to use and uncomfortable to pick up. Let's try something that complements the shape a little more. Here I attached the top of the handle at the collar of the mug. I kept the curve of the handle below the rim to keep it from being vulnerable to being knocked. The lines from the body flow well at the top and the bottom in coordination to the mug body as opposed to the look of it being like a separate appendage. I even rounded the bottom of the handle to echo the rounded mug shape. There's room for two to three fingers comfortably, and the balance looks appropriate for it to be functional. Here they are side by side. The first one looks separate and apart from the body, as opposed to the second handle which flows from the body and back effortlessly. Finally, I threw a tall mug with slightly indented sides that widen at the top. Since I had a notched edge along the foot, I chose a fancy profile extruder tool to make my handle. Since the mug is tall, I thought I would echo that with a longer handle. The longer handle extends too far away from the mug body, which also adds to it being uncomfortable, especially to someone with small hands. Being that there's so much room between the attachments, the handle's more vulnerable to being snapped off by the weight of the contents. Even though there's plenty of room for fingers, the handle's too big to be comfortable to lift and balance with the heavy contents. So let me try that again. This time I shortened the handle. I attached it just a bit more towards the top section of the mug so it'll be comfortable to pick up and visually pleasing too. The shortened length will help take the pressure off the handle as you pick it up and it won't be as likely to break. I can still get four fingers inside the loop and the flat attachment at the top gives the thumb a place to rest. Once again, it's the same exact mug body with just different handle designs you can really see the exaggerated difference between the two. It takes a lot of practice and experience to be able to address all the issues when making specific decisions about what will make your mug handles uniquely yours, but I hope this video gives insight into how to narrow down your choices. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you next time in the studio.